Hi, this is Eric Smith. Time to do another quick look video, and I thought I would do it from the book of Isaiah, chapter 45, verses 22 and 23, and the word of God reads this way. Look unto me, and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God, and there is none else. I have sworn by myself, the word has gone out of my mouth in righteousness, and shall not return, that unto me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear. In Isaiah chapter 45, in fact, in the later chapters of Isaiah, you get a lot of prophecies um, from the prophet Isaiah, from God. But what I like in the midst of all these prophecies in these later chapters is that you get a lot about God himself. You get a lot about God's attributes. Uh, he talks about himself in unwavering, absolute terms. And I love that because we need to understand the God that we worship and that we praise. In the beginning of verse 22, it says, Look unto me, and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth. Now, I like that because God is telling everyone, you need to look unto me if you want to be saved. God is the only Savior, not just a Savior from situations, someone who can save you from things and calamities that are going on on the earth but he can also save you from your sins. And we have to understand when he says, look unto me, this isn't just an invitation, it's also a command and a call because God calls sinners to cry out to him in repentant faith. So he says right now, all the ends of the earth, and that's everybody, Jew and Gentile alike, should actually cry out to God. And if you look unto God and you believe God is who he says he is, you will be saved. And that's akin to Romans 10, uh, 9 through 13. So get the same language. Going further, he says in this verse, For I am God, and there is none else. I like what God is saying here, that he is God, and there's no other gods. Now, let me tell you something. There can be false gods, false religions, but they're either the imagination of sinful man or something demonic. There are no other gods but the true and living God, the God of Scripture. And God will say right out, there is none else. There's no other God but me. And that's why God is worthy of our worship, of our praise. We shouldn't be praising or worshiping any other type of God or gods because they're either, again, just a figment of our imagination or there's something demonic and they are not worthy of praise. Verse 23 says, I have sworn by myself, I love that too. Do you know why God only swears by himself? Because he's self-existent. He's the absolute standard. God does not swear by another person, another quote-unquote God. He does not go outside of himself uh, when he makes decisions or he says something. He swears by himself. He is the ultimate standard. It says, I have sworn by myself. The word has gone out of my mouth in righteousness. I love that. Because God's word is righteous. There's nothing unrighteous about God's word. God's word and what he says, whether it's prophetic or whether it's a command, it's always righteous. And then it says, and shall not return, which basically means whatever God purposes, whatever he says, will come to pass. It will not come back void. If God says something, it's going to be done. And then the last part of verse 23 says, that unto me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear. It doesn't make a difference right now if the unsaved world will not confess the Lord Jesus Christ or they won't bow the knee to him or they won't you know, swear allegiance to him because one day they will. Either you're going to repent and come uh, to the Lord Jesus Christ in faith and you are going to bow down to him as king and master or one day you're going to die and stand before him and you're going to bow down to him. And in fact, the end of verse 23 should remind you of Philippians 2.10 because the same exact words are ascribed to the Lord Jesus Christ. Dear Christian, if you really want to know about God, sometimes the best thing to do is just dive into these prophetic books. Because when God's saying something prophetic, he's also saying something about his nature, about his attributes, about everything that you need to know about him. God can reveal himself in general revelation, but that's just general. But if you want to know about God, you want to get it right from his word. 
So this is Isaiah chapter 45, verses 22 and 23. Just wanted to do a quick look to encourage you, Christian, that when you read these Old Testament prophetic words, you can know that it's going to come to pass because it's coming from God. And you know it's going to come to pass because God is absolute in everything. He's absolute in his righteousness. He's absolute in his love. But he's also absolute in his wrath and his fury. He deserves our praise, honor, and worship. And you know what? We should never, ever go to any other gods or make any gods of our imagination. As always, if the videos on this channel have encouraged your Christian walk and edified you in any way, but you have not subscribed to my channel yet, but you want to, hit the button. If you want to leave any comments, please do so, but please do not be snarky. Please do not be profane. We want to be Christ-like in everything we say and do. And until we do another quick look, remember that God swears by himself. If he says something, it's not going to come away void or come back void. It's going to do the thing that God purposes it to do. That's exactly what's going to happen. And I love that because we can bank on God's word. And these two verses is just an example that when God says it, it will be done. And you know what's really going to be done? Every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess. And you know what? Hallelujah to that. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. And God bless.